I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod means the power, and the staff is your authority. To call upon it will answer you. One with God is a majority, and if God be for me, who can be against me? Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. The politician could have said, I dwell in a secret place. I am surrounded by the sacred circle of God's eternal love. The whole armor of God surrounds me. Wherever I go, the light of God surrounds me and folds me and wraps me. He would render himself invulnerable, invincible, and impervious to all harm. That's the right way to program your subconscious mind. You can build up that immunity. Oh, yes, you can. As a man thinketh in his heart or subconscious, so is he, so does he act, so does he experience, so does he express. This is the law. I'm not talking about thinking in the head. I'm talking about thinking in your heart, your own subconscious. Whatever is impressed there is expressed. Remember, when you're dealing with your subconscious, you're dealing with the power of the Almighty. It's the power that moves the world. It's the power that moves the galaxies in space. It's Almighty. There's nothing to oppose it. Consciousness is gone. Unconditioned consciousness, sometimes it's called awareness, I am, living spirit almighty. Your consciousness is the union of your conscious and subconscious mind. It's the sum total of your acceptances, your beliefs, your opinions, and your convictions. That's God. That's the only God you'll ever know. Your thought and feeling create your destiny. Consciousness is God because it is the only creative power in your life. And your thought and feeling, yes, is the father of all experience. If you talk about the father within, well, what father is everything? Your own thought and feeling. Your conscious and subconscious. Whatever your conscious and subconscious mind agree on, meaning the brain and the heart, comes to pass. True or false, good or bad. You're the one who's choosing. You mold and fashion your own destiny. Your faith in God is your fortune. And your faith should be in the goodness of God, in the land of the living, in the guidance of God, in the harmony of God, in the beauty and glory of the infinite. That's where it should be. You're told no manifestation cometh in the me, save I the Father draw it. The Father is your own thought and feeling. So whatever experiences come to us, uh, there is an equivalent pattern in our subconscious mind. There's always a cause. And that cause, of course, is in our mind. A man said to me that he wanted to succeed and advance in life. In reality, he didn't. He had a subconscious pattern of failure. He had a sense of guilt and felt he should be punished. With his conscious mind, yes, he worked very hard. And he said to himself, in his intellect, oh, I worked very hard. But in his deeper mind, he was programmed and conditioned to failure. He had a sense of unworthiness and a belief which compelled him to fail. He had a picture of failing in his mind. He felt he should be punished, that he was a sinner. The law of your subconscious, you see, is compulsive. That's the power that I mentioned. That's the almighty power. It's the power of God. He learned to reprogram his mind by realizing that he was born to win, born to succeed, born to triumph, for the infinite power is within him. It knows no failure. It's almighty. It created all things. There's nothing to oppose it, challenge it, thwart it, or vitiate it. For it is almighty. It's the only power. Furthermore, he learned he was punishing himself. He started every morning and night and also during the day. And this is what he affirmed. Now, you're writing this. He was writing this down with his conscious mind. And this is what he wrote. I am born to win. I'm born to succeed in my prayer life, my relationship with people, in my chosen work, and in all phases of my life. For the infinite is within me, and the infinite can fail. It's the power of the Almighty moving through me. It's my strength. It's my power. It's my wisdom. Then, he said, success is mine, harmony is mine, beauty is mine, divine love is mine, abundance is mine. He reiterated, repeated these truths. He reflected upon them. He reminded himself driving along the road before he went in to see a customer. 
He announced these truths regularly and systematically, and he didn't deny what he affirmed. And gradually he became a tremendous success because he succeeded in impregnating his subconscious mind by repetition, reminding himself, announcing these things, teaching his thoughts to dwell upon the great affirmatives of life. And as you do this, regularly and systematically, wonders will happen in your life. When you were born, no one had to tell you how to find the mother's breast, you know. There was a subjective wisdom guiding you, directing you. Yes, the Bible says, I will write my laws in your inward parts. I will write them in your heart. I will be your God, and you shall be my people. So all the powers of the God are within you, and the laws and the truths of God are written in your own subjective mind. All the vital organs were controlled when you were born, when you were sound asleep. Every night of your life, that same intelligence governs all the vital organs of your body, your breathing, your inspiration, circulation of your blood, your digestion, your heartbeat, and all that. And that's the God presence within you. The presence and power of God are within you. The great eternal truths are there. They were inscribed in your heart before you were born. But all of us have been programmed since birth. Millions of people have been programmed with certain fears, false beliefs, taboos, and strictures, and superstitions of the first water. As Quinby said in 1847, every child is like a little white tablet. Everybody comes along and scribbles something on it, you know. Grandmother, grandfather, clergyman, father, mother, sisters, brothers. We receive an avalanche of sights and sounds, beliefs and opinions, and don'ts and fears and doubts. You weren't born with any fears at all, you know. You weren't born with any prejudices. You weren't born with any creedal beliefs or any false or weird concepts of God or life. Where did you get them? Someone gave them to you. Someone programmed you, perhaps negatively. Many were told they were sinners in the hands of an angry God. I have talked to women, beautiful, attractive, well-educated. They wear black stockings. They think it's a sin to use rouge or makeup of any kind. Or wear gold, oh, that's a terrible sin. To play cards, cards are of the devil. Or attend movies, all these are sins. When we look at them, they're frustrated, bottled up, inhibited, unhappy. I tell them to wake up, to dress for God. There's nothing in the universe evil. The whole world is here, is, is, was here when they were born. All the birds sing for you, and all the... Um, uh, all the animals in the world are here too, and all the stars are in the sky for you to adore and to worship and to be delighted with. So I tell them, I said, you're here to dance, and go ahead and learn to dance, for the universe is the dance of God. And I tell them, get, learn, take lessons in golf, play music, do all the things you're not doing. Play music, attend college, take lectures in public speaking, meet men. I go out and take courses in Spanish or many other things. You're here to lead a full and happy life. You're here to live in an objective world, have recreation, have fun, merriment and joy and creativity, and express yourself. You're also here to meditate and to pray, of course, too. We're living in a subjective and objective world. There's nothing evil in the universe. God pronounced everything good. Therefore, there's nothing evil in dancing or playing cards or anything of that nature, looking at a movie, a constructive one, nothing evil in any of those things. Nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Then I explained to them, I said, you're frustrated, you're sick, you're unhappy. And I teach them how to attract a man into their life. I said, you should be married, you should have love. Every woman wants to be loved and cosseted, appreciated. She likes to receive attention. She wants to feel needed and wanted. And if she says she doesn't, she's sick. Every woman does. And then they uh, learn a simple law. They go out and do all these things. Do the thing you're afraid to do, and the death of fear is certain. I tell them, you've been brainwashed. You've been programmed negatively and destructively. And the will of God for you is a greater measure of joy, of happiness, of love, of peace of mind. They learn the law of attraction. You should see some of them now coming to the West Sri Bell Theater, beautifully dressed, you know. And they have some makeup on, too, and they have beautiful rings, sometimes a managed ring. 
Oh, yes, they have transformed. They have reprogrammed their mind. Infinite spirit attracts to be the ideal man who harmonizes with me in every way, shape, and form. He is spiritual minded. He loves my ideals. I love his ideals. He doesn't want to make me over, and I don't want to make him over. He comes without encumbrance. He's the man sent from God. There are harmony, peace, love, and understanding between us. That's the prayer I give them, and I say, now you write that down in your subconscious. Do it with interest. Gradually, like a seed, it will die in your deeper mind and come to pass in ways you know not of. I was taught when I was young that if a boy were uh, indoctrinated with a certain religious belief until he was seven, that no one could change it. Well, of course, it can be changed, but rather difficult. The boy, of course, is being brainwashed. But they were referring, you see, to that negative conditioning of the mind. When young, we're susceptible, we're susceptible, we're impressionable and teachable. We're amenable to suggestion. We don't have the sense to reject it, reject the negative suggestions. And we accept the many false beliefs and erroneous concepts regards God, life, and the universe. Where did you get your creed or your religious belief? You certainly weren't born with it. Is it true? Is it reasonable? Is it illogical and reasonable? Is it unscientific? If it's unscientific and illogical and unreasonable, it can't be true. There is Pat, for example. He believes the cards are stacked against him. Some fortune teller told him that, I suppose. The cards are not stacked against him. The universe is for him. But he is enthroned in that concept that he believes it. His subconscious mind accepts it. This false belief <clears throat> creates a quarrel in his mind, and he thinks people are working against him, that misfortune would follow him, some sort of a jinx is after him. He made that law for himself, and it controls him and governs him. Man's subconscious assumptions, beliefs, and convictions dictate and control and man manipulate all his conscious actions. Doctor, the late Dr. David Seabury told me about a man who was practically crippled, partially crippled anyhow. He had little or no education, and as an experiment and suggestion, he pretended to analyze his potentialities based upon the idea that his mental faculties and character cracks are indicated by the configuration of one's head, also the lines of the configuration in his hand. Seabury told this man who was partially crippled, he said, you're destined to become a great evangelist, a great preacher. God intended you to go forth and preach in a wonderful, wonderful way. This man became active in his particular church, and he became an outstanding preacher, Dr. Seabury said. He accepted and believed that God had ordained him to become a great preacher, and according to his belief was it done to him. And it was just as simple as that. There is only one power, one presence. Your thought and feeling fathers all your experience. How are you programming your subconscious mind? The creative power is one. You know one of the greatest of all truths? Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. One Lord. Israel means a prince ruling with God. Israel means any man who knows his I amness to be the Lord God Almighty, to be sovereign and supreme. And he gives all his allegiance, devotion, and loyalty to that one power, the living spirit within him. He gives no power to any created thing, to any man, woman, or child in this universe. 